Hello everybody, my name is Roy Nemmer of MundialDislasty.com and welcome to another video and this time around it's all about the defenders. Argentina national team coach Lionel Scaloni has selected nine defenders for the finalissima match against Italy and let's get to it. Let's take a look at the nine defenders. There is that big name of uh, Marco Senesi in there and obviously Christian Romero and they're all big names. So let's get to them. Let's see them. Here they are on the screen. Gonzalo Montiel, Nahuel Molina, Juan Foyt, Christian Romero, Germán Pasella, Marco Senesi, Nicolas Otamendi, Lisandro Martinez, Nehuan Perez, Nicolas Tagliafico, and Marcos Acuna. And uh, let's get started. Let's just start things off with Montiel, the man from Sevilla. It's, it was his debut season with the club. Uh, he joined them over from River Plate. One of the heroes in the Copa America absolutely shut down Neymar, uh, Ray Charlison, uh, Vinicius Jr., uh, Gabi Gold, everybody, everyone that went uh, down that right-hand side against Montiel just completely shut off. And uh, let's take a look at his numbers for Sevilla this season. Um, 28 matches in total. Uh, in La Liga, 18 matches, one goal, three assists. In the Champions League, four goal, sorry, four matches, uh, zero goals, zero assists. In the Europa League, two matches, zero goals, zero assists. And the Copa America, uh, sorry, and uh, the Copa del Rey. I saw that Copa America. Was so still so excited about it. Uh, the Copa del Rey, four matches, uh, zero goals, uh, zero assists. And uh, for Montiel, well, talking about the Copa America, um, you know, he was starting half the matches there, and the other half was uh, Molina at right back. But since the Copa America, he has not featured much for the national team. In the last eleven matches, he has only played two. Two of the last 11 matches, and uh, one of them, uh, the other one, uh, he was uh, he was suspended for. So on the bench for eight of them, he has kind of uh, fallen down, uh, become the uh, the substitute uh, for Molina on that right hand side. That does not mean he is not a solid, solid uh, defender by any means. Uh, if he were to start against Italy, would I be happy? Absolutely, I would have no problems with Montiel starting. Uh, but he hasn't gotten that many matches that many matches since the Copa America. Uh, Scaloni has constantly opted for Molina as right back. And to be fair to Molina, he's done a respectable job. So that was Montiel. And talking about Molina, let's talk about him. Uh, the defender with the most goals in the top five European leagues. I repeat... Molina with Udinese is the defender, not just the Argentine defender, but any defender in the top five European leagues with the most goals to his name, seven of them. And let's look at his numbers for Udinese. Um, 37 matches in total, 35 in Serie A, seven goals, five assists in the Coppa Italia, two matches there, one goal, zero assists. And uh, I mean, eight goals in total, seven in the top leagues, sorry, seven in the league. Um, what can you say? Uh, just in attack, uh, incredible, incredible, and scored some great goals, by the way, for Udinese. They, they haven't been tap-ins. Uh, they've been long range. They've been from midfield. They've been free kicks. They've been everything. The man is a goal scoring machine. And uh, there's a reason why uh, Scaloni has started him. Now, my question to you is, which one would you start? Uh, would you start uh, Molina? Would you start Montiel? Who's your starting right back? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Uh, personally, I would be happy with both of them, um, maybe depending on the opponent. But in this case, Italy, I wouldn't mind going with Molina. But if Scaloni decides to go with Montiel, hey, by all means, I have no, no problems with that. Now, moving on to a potential, well, to another right back, uh, Juan Foyth. Uh, just a great season for him uh, in Villarreal. Uh, made the semifinals of the Champions League turned his, uh, I mean, his national career slowly turned upside down. He was left out of the Copa America, missed several, several matches for Argentina, just not selected. He was not selected for Argentina for the longest time, uh, not selected for the Copa America, not selected for the World Cup qualifiers, up until the last match where he did play against Ecuador in that 1-1 draw. And if we take a look at his matches uh, for Villarreal this season, 38 in total, one goal, one assist, uh, in La Liga, 25 matches, one goal, one assist. In the Champions League, 10 matches for Foyth. Uh, no goals, no assists there. Uh, and the Youth Fest Super Cup, one match. And the Copa del Rey, uh, two matches there. So he's been absolutely 
phenomenal uh, for the most part for Villarreal. He is versatile, can play on the right-hand side, can play uh, as a centre-back as well. So we'll see. It'll be very, very interesting uh, to see against Italy. Does fourth play? Does he get uh, you know some minutes on as a substitute? So that'll be interesting. He does have competition. I mean, we just mentioned Molina. We just mentioned Montiel. Is Foyth that third choice right back? Uh, is he there or would you guys play him more as a center back? Let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think and have to say about Foyth. Now, from one former Tottenham man to another, Christian Romero, Cuti Romero, uh, just probably the most loved Argentine center back in the world. I know Tottenham Hotspur fans absolutely love him. Let's take a look at his at his matches, his debut season with Tottenham, uh, 30 matches, one goal in the Premier League, uh, 22 matches, one goal there in the Champions League, sorry, in uh, the Conference League, uh, two matches in the qualifiers of the Conference League, two matches, FA Cup, two matches, uh, League Cup, two matches. Uh, let's not forget, he did suffer a hamstring injury uh, actually for Argentina while playing against Brazil last November, and that kept him out for about three months. So he did suffer a big, big injury there. And, uh, you know, he recently stated that maybe it was down to a lack of preseason. That's why he was injured a couple of times this season for Tottenham. He did not have a preseason, or at least a proper preseason, uh, one directly from Atalanta to Tottenham uh, after winning the Copa America for Argentina. He has become the center back partner alongside uh, Nicolas Otamendi, became that center back at the Copa America. And even prior to that, uh, he did uh, play against Colombia and against Chile, uh, you know, prior to the Copa America in the qualifiers. Started the Copa, played well in the Copa, started the final in the Copa, it's just a f tremendous, tremendous center back. Um, and especially when you consider his age, he's still so, so young. And uh, Tottenham have a gem of a center back. And he is a rock and he complements Otamendi so, so well. Both players comp complement each other uh, so, so well. So he has become that starting uh, center back with Otamendi. From one center back to another, and one that actually won a, uh, won a trophy this season, Germán Pasella of Real Betis. He won the Copa del Rey, and uh, he's someone that will need a very, very good showing if he does get some minutes against Italy, because there are some center backs now that potentially might, uh, you know, might be ahead of him uh, when it comes to, to that list for Scaloni. But let's look at his season for Real Betis. 35 matches in total, um, you know, zero goals, uh, one assist. Uh, in La Liga, 23 matches. And uh, Europa League, seven matches. Copa del Rey, four matches. And he did play the full 120 minutes in the final against Valencia. But he has lost a step or two uh, when it comes to the national team in terms of the players, in terms of his status uh, with the national team. Lisandro Martinez has gotten ahead of him. Christian Romero is ahead of him. Uh, Nicolas Otamendi is ahead of him. There might be some others as well. Uh, Lucas Martinez Cuarta, who not in this list, but at one point potentially uh, could have started ahead of Pasella. So Pasella really needs a good, good showing. Uh, whatever minutes he does get for Argentina and next season for uh, for Betis, if uh, you know he wants to still have a chance to make that World Cup squad, because there's a lot just a lot of competition uh, in that back line, specifically, specifically the center backs. And talking about competition, let's get to the one that a lot of people have asked about, and that is Marcos Senesi, the man from Feyenoord, uh, played and represented Argentina at youth level at an under-20 World Cup, played alongside uh, the likes of Lisandro Martinez and Lautaro Martinez even. Uh, and we discussed that in the previous video, which I'll have the link down, uh, down below. So Senesi, a part of the Feyenoord team that made the conference finals. They did lose to Roma, but still a good, good showing from him. Let's not forget, Italian coach Roberto Mancini called him up to the national team squad. And uh, Senesi said no. You know, he also got called up by, uh, by Scaloni for Argentina. And he ultimately said, hey, I want to play for the national team, for the Copa, for the Copa America champions. And uh, looking at his numbers... He is the defender, the Argentine defender that has played the most matches this season. 50 in total, uh, 12 in the Conference League, uh, in the uh, Eredivisie, 32 matches there. 
the qualifiers for the Conference League, five matches, and then uh, you have the Dutch uh, the Dutch Cup, uh, one match in there. Still only 25 years old, uh, sought after by, according to reports, many uh, European clubs, a couple of them in Italy, ironically enough. Uh, and Senesi is one that, like I said earlier, a lot of people have asked about. He's finally getting his chance. Now, whether he does start, even get some minutes against Italy remains to be seen. Unlikely, unlikely, although you never know, uh, especially with uh, with Scaloni. He's not shy of giving uh, his players some uh, some opportunities. And uh, we're going to do a separate video as well because Argentina will play Estonia in a second friendly match uh, against, uh, sorry, against Estonia on June 5th. I'm going to do a separate video uh, regarding that. So maybe if he doesn't play against Italy, maybe he gets his first cap, his first match, his first minutes against Estonia. Uh, and he has competition. I mean, we just went through a couple of the center backs there and we're not even done. We are not even done. Let's go from someone who has zero matches for the Argentina national team to someone who has been a pillar in that back line for a couple of years now, Nicolas Otamendi. And he's gotten, he's gotten stick in the past from a couple of people, but I think he has shut down all doubters. He has shut them all up uh, since last year. Nicholas Otamendi with Benfica. He does have 43 matches this season, uh, 28 in the league. Uh, and then you have the Champions League, nine matches, where he performed tremendously well, uh, by the way. And then you have uh, the uh, qualifiers for the Champions League as well, four matches, the Allianz Cup one, and uh, the Tata de Portugal. Uh, sorry if I butchered that uh, that pronunciation. If I did, let me know in the chat or let me know in, in the comments below. So Otamendi... The experienced, uh, the experienced center back out of all of them, out of Pasella, more than Pasella, uh, out of Christian Romero, out of Senesi, out of everybody I just uh, spoke about. And you got to give him his due. You got to give him credit. Uh, you know, I've said this for the past year. Nicholas Otamendi has done well. He has not put a foot wrong. People love to hate on him for whatever reason. Maybe in the past his reputation wasn't the best, but the passion he has not put a foot wrong like i said and you cannot hate on otamendi and that partnership that he has formed with christian romero good luck to any forward getting through them just incredible incredible now i mentioned a couple of moments ago lisandro martinez another one and one that has potentially become the third choice center back for scaloni uh, just behind otamendi and christian romero the guy from Ajax, what a player. Uh, 37 matches this season, uh, 24 in the league, uh, one goal, three assists there. In the Champions League, eight matches. Uh, in the Dutch Cup, four matches. And then you have the uh, Johan Cruyff uh, Cup uh, with one match. He did win the Eredivisie, so alongside uh, uh, Nicolas Tagliapico, who I'm going to talk about in just a second as well. So those two, plus Pasella, uh, three Argentine defenders that have won uh, the league. Now, he did miss the last seven matches uh, due to a muscle injury uh, for, uh, for Ajax on their way to winning the league. But he still had a great, great season. Uh, he was a substitute against Brazil when uh, Romero came off injured. And he did play in the last, uh, the last two matches, uh, or sorry, in, uh, in two of the matches against Chile and Colombia. And let me tell you, his build-up play from deep, he's able to bring the ball forward from deep, his crossing, his passing. He starts play from deep. He's very creative, and he's someone that, honestly, if it weren't for Nicolas Otamendi and, and uh, Christian Romero, would be starting and would probably start in most or for most national teams uh, around the world. An incredible talent. And I know I'm getting ahead, a bit ahead of myself, uh, but I think... Um, you know, if he continues this traje this trajectory, I don't think it would be any exaggeration whatsoever uh, to say that after Otamendi hangs up his boots for the national team, it will be Lisandro and Cuti Romero, those two center backs, and what a partnership that is going to be. Uh, it's going to be something to watch. And uh, Argentina, we're you know, if you're a fan of the national team, we're blessed right now uh, because for the longest period, at one point felt as if the center backs were not world class were not up to par to you know some of the other teams and now spoiled for choice who do you want you want romero you can do it you want nick sotomendi you can do it 
Uh, you want Lisandro Martinez? Why not? You want Marco Senesi, someone that Italy wanted? You could throw him in there as well. So Argentina, very, very lucky uh, to have those center backs. Now, from someone who uh, hasn't always gotten many, many chances to someone who's gotten even less chances, uh, Neto and Perez, uh, and let's look at his uh, his numbers, uh, 22 matches uh, in total in Serie A, uh, 20 matches, Coppa Italia, two matches, and uh, still only 21 years old for him. And, you know, he's played in a back three uh, for his club, so he is pretty versatile in that sense. He can't play in the back three, can't play in the back four. So he's still very young, like I said. I mean, 21 years old. Um, you want to talk about players for the future. I named Cuti Romero and Lisandro Martinez. They're for the present. Perez potentially one for the future as well. And he is in the team. He has made the cut ahead of the likes of uh, Martinez Cuarta, right? Martinez Cuarta, for example, uh, was part of the preliminary list, not a part of the final list. Perez is. So... Um, Maybe maybe Scaloni really uh, you know he rates him uh, he rates him highly. Talking about someone who is rated highly, Nicholas Tagliafico. Um, I mean, since or since Juan Pablo Sorin retired, you know Argentina went from uh, Sorin to Gabriel Ence as the uh, as the left back for Argentina. Not bad at all. Two players extremely passionate and extremely talented and always gave it their all to, for the national team. But since Ainsi left for a while, you know, switched around. You had Marcos Rojo who was there. Uh, absolutely love Rojo, by the way. A big, big fan. But then, you know, it's kind of okay. Well, Rojo's there, but Rojo's a, maybe more of a center back than a left back. You know, we need someone. In came Nicolas Agliafico for the World Cup in 2018. Uh, a good showing from him, solid showing from him. And for a couple of years, was the starting set, was the starting left back. Uh, sorry for uh, for Argentina, and now not as much. Maybe he lost his place, and uh, he lost his place. It seemed like it as well for Ajax, and he is set to leave Ajax. But first, let's look at his numbers this season: thirty matches in total, three goals, four assists in uh, the league. Twenty-two matches, two goals, two assists. Champions League: three matches. Uh, the Dutch Cup: four matches, one goal, one assist, and the Johan Cruyff uh, Cup as well. Um, you know, one uh, one match there, and for Argentina, he's played the last. He's played three of the last four matches, which is not bad at all. But in all likelihood, that is down to Marcos Acuna being injured. Uh, Acuna did miss a couple of matches uh, for Sevilla uh, and Argentina, and Tagliafico showed up in those matches. You know, he had lost his place uh, in the national team, his starting spot. I mean, uh, to Marcos Acuna, and Tagliafico was playing like a man possessed, like a man who was playing to prove a point, and he proved it. He can still play at the highest, highest level. Uh, very, very good for Argentina in the matches that he did play recently. So he has some competition. It's not easy, but you know what? It's healthy competition. It's good competition. And uh, Scaloni is spoiled for choice because we're going from one left back to another, Marco Sacuña, and um, the one who has pretty much made that left back position his Another fullback from Sevilla. We started with Montiel, the right back. We're going to finish it with uh, Acuna, the left back at Sevilla. Let's look at his numbers. Uh, 41 matches in total, one goal, one goal for assists. In La Liga, 31 matches in total, uh, one goal, three assists. Five in the Champions League, three matches in the Europa League, and two matches in the Copa del Rey. And Acuna is another one, just tremendous tremendous and they both offer they're both very different right we spoke about Tagliafico we're going to talk about Acuna but two different uh left backs two different kinds of left backs and Scaloni has at times played both uh, he would play uh you know either Acuna as the left back and bring Tagliafico on to play ahead of him other times it's the opposite Tagliafico is the left back Acuna comes in to play you know ahead of him and and cross the ball forward so Scaloni is spoiled for choice Argentina are spoiled for choice, and in all likelihood, um, I would guess, in all likelihood, Marco Acuna does start. Now, my question to everybody is, what would be your back line? Uh, I'm guessing you're going to go with the back four. If not, if you're going to go with the back three or a back five, let me know. Leave a comment. Who would be your starting left back? Would it be Nicolas Tagliafico or Marco Acuna? Who would be your center backs? Uh, 
if we just named a couple of them, uh, you got uh, Lisandro Martinez, you got Utamendi, you got Senesi, you got Cuti Romero. Uh, and who would be your right back between Montiel and, um, and Molina? So let me know. Leave a comment below. Uh, if you missed it, by the way, the video is up for the midfielders and the video is up for the strikers. And we're going to have one more video in regards to the goalkeepers. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to never miss a thing and hit that notifications button to be the first person notified as soon as a new video drops. Once more, my name is Roy Nemmer of MoondalbiCeleste.com and thank you for watching.